scheduler, you will have different priority classes. Priority classes is actually a way of two types. Last time I already showed you one of the types using the chemical knives. Yeah, be a nice guy, so remember. I call knives, then I will change priority. Uh, usually, we call this type of priority dynamic. Okay, so what is dynamic priority? You can lower your process, and you have, let's, let's say, the dynamic priority level X. You don't like it, you change it to Y. Okay? And another is called static priority. It's the time that you create a process, you define this priority. Okay? And we call it static because you will not supposed to change it. Okay? And later on, I will show you some illustration that are some processes using static, some processes using dynamic. Dynamic, oh, okay, dynamic, I'll show you, okay, using a nice program. <coughs> Okay, so the static part is, oh, by the way, what are the static part? Static part, I can show you some main pages. Uh, I have to go back to, to Linux because uh, it's not on Mac. Huh? You feel dangerous, huh? Oh, okay. Schedule. Hey, eh? what? Sketch. Sketch. Set. Okay, this one. Okay. So can you see this set and get scheduling policy or parameters, and you create a process and get and set it. Okay. And there is a field called sketch priority, and this is a static priority, not the thing that you can change in into a nice guy or a bad guy using the nice command, okay? So when you read the head, okay, you can read the head by reading this man page, you'll find that only roots, only the root account can call this a system call. If you're not having a root account, you get a call. So that's why the static priority is usually talking about something really important and to break the entire process Q in a multiple Q, okay? Originally, I always said that oh, there is a process Q. Now we have process Qs with different priorities, okay? And different priorities is based on uh, when you are the creator, you are a root account, you want to set a certain priority, then when it have certain priority, let's say I use the notation here, is just an example. The notation number four is a higher priority than number three. So you will have the case like this. I will finish these two guys first. Maybe within the, the same level, we have different scheduling policy. Now I just use an example that every queue itself is a round robin. Okay? And in Linux, they will have different things. In Linux, maybe within that priority class is its FI4. Okay? So the illustration is very easy. Right? Remember, I told I told you about the system call, okay? So that means that your system now becomes become vulnerable. What is the vulnerable thing, okay? Remember, usually when we change priority class, don't fire a wild one process to become a high priority, okay? So do you know why? If you don't know why, don't worry. Let's see this example. Let's say I have a two process in the highest priority class, so the scheduler is behave like that. The scheduler look at the queues. The highest queue has two guys. So we'll only put the highest guy into the scheduler and run. Until they finish, they won't stop focusing on class four. Okay? So then, because it's bound open, so it will uh, eventually uh, take two guys finish, and then you will have a chance to go to priority class three. And let's say suddenly you fire another process in. Because it's a higher priority and now the CPU is uh, able to be a preemptive, you can immediately switch back to a newly fire, I mean a newly created high priority process. Now back to my questions. Why shouldn't we input a high priority while one process? What will happen if you do this? No groups. Let's say the priority class four. 
I create a wow one, wow true, infinite loop. Fire it at this level. So what should you do if you do this? Uh, I mean, what should you do means that how can you rescue the system? Very easy. You have to pull the pump. We said, um, remove its power, shut down your whole building hours, I don't know. Okay. Why? Because if that while one process goes to this level, it will go away, right? Because it's an infinite process, infinite loop. Okay? And you will continue to do this. Yeah? No problem. You can always try this because I told you what is that system called. Okay? You can use this system call, okay? to set a infinite loop process to have the highest priority ever. Okay, later I will tell you what are the levels. Okay, then I, I have tried this, but of course this is not infinite loop. That loop guarantee will stop. Entire system just frozen. Frozen for some time. And then it's suddenly back to life. With that highest priority guy, KO, finish, or terminate whatever you said, okay? So this is a, the thing that when you have a high priority process, which is not short life. And remember, whenever you create a high priority process, it make it become short life, make sure that it will just need a very few uh, CPU time or your entire system will get frozen there, okay? So this is a priority scheduler. And with this in mind, you can create different scheduler by having different classes with different priorities principle. Here, the principle is I want FI code. The next, I want SGL. Of course, the entire design is actually an example, okay? Which is not real. Why is not real? You can take a look here. FI code and SGL actually doesn't exist, right? And then this design is even more fancier. We call it feedback queue. Feedback queue, what is a feedback queue? You put a process into the level three, and uh, let's say the quantum is 10 unit or 10 complex, okay? And after 10 complex, what will happen? It will be downgraded to the next level, okay? With more quantum, and will downgrade to another level with more quantum, okay? So actually this part, I copied it from the test code, okay? The test code described, described. This is the design of Windows 2000. Who have used Windows 2000? Okay, so this this question get out. They only two guys say yes. Okay, oh, three. Thank you. Okay, Windows 2000 never never seen this before. Yeah, even more stable than XP. <laughs> yeah, you know it's become a masterpiece. Oh, stable, more stable than XP. Okay. <laughs> yeah, the textbook said that this kind of design is actually happening in a in a Windows 2000, and whenever a uh, process go to the bottom level, okay, it will have a longer time to run, but few priority get scheduled, right? Whenever you, you have a higher priority, you will have a higher chance to get scheduled, but you will run for a shorter time. So what is the more? It is for short life process. Okay? Whenever you get some short life process in the system, it will kill it very very I mean very fast, okay, as if we are implementing an SJF. As if. Okay, because we cannot count. We cannot count is a CPU requirement. So here, I foresee that it may be a short process, so maybe let it to run it first. Okay, but actually our guess is wrong. Our guess is wrong. So the upgrade you, the upgrade you show that uh, next time I won't try to process you, but with another maybe a new guy comes in. Okay, now whenever you, I find some process here, I think that okay, let's uh try again, maybe my, my previous uh, SJF implementation is uh, still good enough, so make it into 20 quantums, and again, I'm wrong, okay? So that guy, now I know that that guy is no longer a short process, you go to the bottom class, okay, whenever the new process comes in, set it to priority free, okay? So this is a Windows 2000 implementation, okay? So, how about Linux? Linux is much more easier, only two type of guys, okay? This is real, this real implementation. Uh, level zero, oh, by the way, this is an old design. Huh? I, don't, I don't want to expose to you the latest design. This is just very, very awful, okay? The old design here is uh, about 10, 15 years before. Uh, 
Linux kernel 2.4, okay? We have uh, three type of processes, RR, FIFO, and other. Other means that it's not FIFO or not RR, okay? And others means ordinary user will always join the only scheduling priority level, zero. Okay, wherever you create a process, you have zero layer. And for kernel, the kernel have some important tasks. It will create what, what we call kernel threads. The kernel threads will have a higher priority, maybe a 99, okay? Or you have the roots. You have the roots, you can create a process of higher priority here. Using the system code that I just introduced to you, okay? And, oh, by the way, the system code also describes something. Oh, window sound. Sucks. <laughs> yeah. So you can see, uh, uh, the Linux kernel allows you to create processes, not just others. If you have roots, you can make it into a FIFO or RR, for example, personal policy or run open policy. Okay. And it survived in this red area. Of course, different queues and different priorities always start with the scheduling of 99. No 99 process, 98, 97, 96, so and so forth. Whenever you have a process like this, uh, RR, then it will have quantum implemented after you use the quantum within the same queue, go back to the end of the queue, and let the other guy come up. In this scenario, it's interesting, okay? We submit two jobs. Uh, one is younger, one is older. The older guy is out, out, so it's in the head of the queue. The younger guy is an FIFO. So what will happen? Very interesting. Yeah. Oh, oh, I see. Yeah, I didn't, I, uh, I removed the animation, oh, sorry. Then I, I do use a, use a way to, to draw it here. Wait a moment. Okay, so the the change is easier. Let's say this guy run first, this R R one first. Okay, then after it's run for its quantum, it will go to the end of the queue. So here we have a R. Yeah, I don't have a mouse. Very hard, huh? R R. Yeah, sucks, huh? <laughs> yeah, I mean that. I use three fingers to draw. Okay, very hard, huh? So this is R R. I go to here. Okay, I remove that guy. Remove. Okay, it doesn't exist anymore. Okay, so then this FF, F, no, FIFO, <laughs> no, FF. FIFO, it will go to the head of the queue, okay, and, but it's the same FIFO, so what will happen? Very interesting. It don't have quantum, it will seize the CPU until it's been its job, okay? Then after this, it's finished, then we'll let the R out to run again, okay? So this is uh, the Linux scheduler implementation. And how about this area? This area is interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, we will talk about it in the elite class. Welcome to sit in if you want to know how this process. This will obey several rules. It will take the nice value into account. If you're a nice guy, sorry, feel a chance to get involved. Remaining quantum, if you have some remaining quantum, welcome to use it up. Okay, so why we have the remaining quantum? Usually because you go to Weibo, I.O. and come back. So this is as if giving you bonus. If you go to Weibo, I.O., you have five quantum quantums left. Yeah, when you come back to the queue, other guys don't have any quantums left, you will take a chance. Okay? Or which core or processor you are in. Last time I already talked about it. If you're in a core A of CPU 1, I will try to schedule you in the same core because the L1 cache will get invalidated if I move you from that core to another core. Okay? So this is the scheduler port. Alright? So how can I how can I stop that process? Huh? Let me quit it. Alright. So, so this is it about a scheduler. So the scheduler, I cannot talk about this much because of what? Let me draw my head on slides. Because there is, it seems to be, I mean, uh, as if I didn't teach anything, right? Because there is no best or standard algorithm in this world in processing of our, I mean, uh, the, the scheduler, okay? There are many, many process 
coming in and it is an online processing uh, algorithm and which is MP hard. So there are many new type of pro of scheduling algorithm appear. I cannot record it now.